Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone to this week's regular rollers. Uh, we're going to get started right after I mentioned that this week's list is brought to you by Greg Morris Cards. More on them coming up in just a bit. We'll start off with one that I stumbled across as I was looking for uh, Cal Ripken autos for my PC, but I st came across this listing and I noticed that it's a 2003 SP Authentic uh, Cal Ripken autograph numbered out of 250, graded BGS 8.5 with a 10 for the auto. And if uh, if you're like me, your first thought was 10 for the auto. How is that a 10 for the auto? It looks super faded uh, and just not not a nice looking auto at all. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that at the time this was put in the slab, it was a 10, and it's just sort of faded over time. Uh, and so I'm not gonna give Beckett a hard time for that, but something to be aware of with autos. Uh, yeah, I mean you know they can fade over time. Uh, so keep keep them out of the light and and things like that. It ended up going for eighty four dollars, which uh, you know I would I would normally say that's quite low, but given the the faded auto, that seems about right. This one was sent by Matt, who wrote, "I thought this was a solid pickup as is, but it was even better because I bundled it with another item from the same seller. And when it arrived yesterday, I noticed the Edger and James Bowman's best rookie card that you see in the photo is actually a refractor, numbered to just four hundred and in great condition. This actually sold for quite a bit less than what the apparent best card in the lot typically goes for." The Peyton Manning Ultra Rookie is a BGS 9. That's actually just a 0.5 subgrade bump away from a 9.5. All the other cards are just a nice bonus. I think it uh, sold so low because the title is not the greatest. Yeah, congrats on that pickup. That's uh, definitely, a, I mean, the, the Manning's worth well well more than the uh, price of admission here. And the Idrin James being the Refractor Rookie, that's a nice, uh, nice bonus as well. I think the biggest mistake the seller made here is that they just didn't highlight uh, the key cards in the opening photo. Like, the opening photo at first glance just looks like 12 sort of random cards, but, you know, really the Manning should be front and center uh, and, and, you know, and, and should be highlighted in both the, the, the photo and in the title. This was sent about my man Living With LT, longtime friend of the channel, and actually has a great channel of his own and actually went on his channel a couple weeks ago, did an hour-long discussion. It was really fun. I uh, included a link in the description below if you want to check it out. But he wrote, I snagged this immediately up on Com C when I lost on a bid with a, an SGC 9.5, which went around the same price. I lost that bid but was happy to see one of these lying around. I've been grabbing Kobe Bryant, LeBron James duo cards with them as long as, as I know long-term. These will hold value for collectors. Yeah, very cool card. I, I don't know how many cards they have together. can't be very many. Off the top of my head, I can only think of uh, three maybe. I'm sure, I'm sure there's more than three. But off the top of my head, I can only can think of three. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the two goats of their era post post the Michael Jordan era here on one card. Pretty cool. Next up is a 1996 uh, Pacific Prisms Flamethrowers, Randy Johnson. And, you know, I've mentioned a bunch. The, the, the late 1990s, I think, is the most creative card uh, creative era for card designs. They just, everyone, there were so many companies and everyone was competing with each other. And everyone wanted the hot new item. And uh, things went it got a bit out of control. But there's a lot of really just nice looking card designs, uh, creative die cuts, and here's just a great example. I mean, look at this card. just sort of takes the shape of a of a, a flamethrowing fastball here. It's pretty uh, pretty cool. Uh, and Randy Johnson, of course, a Hall of Famer. This card went for uh, for $12, but I, I think it's a nice representation of the era. Next one was sent by Bill, who wrote, I saw this unusual patch on eBay with a college football player card. What is this? How can a football player have a basketball logo man patch on his jersey? Would there be any interest in this just because it's so odd? Wow, that is hilarious or sad, I guess, depending on your point of view. I mean, this is just silly here. Football player with a basketball logo man patch. You know, on the back it says the enclosed authentic memorabilia is not from any specific game or event. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it says it's authentic memorabilia, so maybe that's an authentic memorabilia from some basketball game of another player. I don't, I don't know, but obviously this is a, a bit ridiculous here. Listed for $175, it did not uh, sell for that. Next one was sent up by Ben, who wrote, I purchased this card for a little under $10 all in. Not a big fan of relics, but this one caught my eye. On the surface, it's just a dual-based relic card, but on the back, you can see it says that the, that they are authentic authentic bases used in the 2000 World Series at Shea Stadium. Being a Mets fan, this was a must-have for me. Yeah, and this, you know, compared to the last patch we just saw, which is just vague and, and, and you know, oh, this is authentic maybe, who knows, and, you know, uh, not from anything important. But, you know, back 20 years ago, I did an entire video about this. The patches were legit. The, you know, this is a legit base card from a base used in the 2000 World Series. It says all that on the back in, in great detail. Uh, I think this this sort of stuff's really really cool. And again, not not very expensive here under under ten bucks for two Hall of Fame. I guess Clemens is not a Hall of Famer, but Mike Piazza Hall of Famer and Roger Clemens uh, an all time great pitcher. How about another multiple player card with Mike Piazza on it? This was sent by Ron, who wrote currently the only rookie card in baseball that features two Hall of Famers is the '78 Topps Molitor Trammel. And the 2001 uh, Topps Update Ichiro Pujols, 
both of those will definitely get in once eligible. To me, this card should be the third. Piazza is in, and Delgado should be at, uh, as well. The fact that McGriff got to be on the ballot for 10 years and then eventually get in, but uh, Delgado was one and done, is one of the biggest oversights by, by voters. Delgado is now the all-time leader in home runs who is not in the Hall of Fame, with 473 exceptions being uh, suspected or guilty steroid players. He had over 1,500 RBIs and is one of only six players with at least 30 home runs in 10 or more straight seasons. Three of the others are known steroid guys in Bond, Sosa, and A-Rod. 30 or more home runs 11 times, more than 100 RBIs 9 times, finished second in MVP in 2003 behind A-Rod, uh, who admitted taking steroids that year and had a career of 138 OPS+, plus, which is higher than both McGriff and Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, whether Delgado you know, deserved to get in or not, he certainly deserved more of a look than he got. He, one and done was a, a, an absolute ridiculous result as uh you know there are, there are players who stick around on the ballot who are nowhere near his accomplishments and your point about most home runs of any player not in the hall of fame that uh, that works strongly for his case i would say uh this card is actually technically not a rookie card now we're getting a little like i said technical by beckett's definition both delgado and piazza appear in 1992 sets uh they're both in the 1992 bowman set and piazza has a couple other cards that year so uh, you know by beckett's old definition this is not an official rc but still a great card here for under two dollars Next up is a 1971 Topps Nolan Ryan. It's graded a PSA EX5, which is a, that's a decent grade for 71s. As that's a really condition-sensitive set. This would be his fourth-year card. And the reason I wanted to show this is just some, some trivia for you uh, vintage fans out there. 1971 is uh, really the first year that Topps tried some in-action photos on their card. They have some uh, like in-action subsets, but I'm talking about the, the, base, the main base cards have some action photos. And you can see here, Nolan Ryan's in action. Usually before this, it was always just a, a, a profile or a pose, but here he's actually, you know, pitching in an actual game. A lot of the photos are at, like at a far distance. You can't see very good details. I guess they didn't have great cameras back then, but 1971, first year they did that. I thought that was kind of interesting. This card sold for $120. I was the seller. I sold it myself through Greg Morris cards. It's about fair market value here. And as I mentioned at the beginning, Greg Morris is sponsoring this episode. They are one of the premier sellers of sports cards on eBay. I'm a longtime customer there, as both as a buyer and a seller. Everything you want from a seller: high quality photos, accurate descriptions, impeccable feedback. All, all that is top notch. Uh, they have a massive selection of cards from from raw, vintage to modern to graded, and they've recently started a YouTube channel which focuses on the history of sports cards. A lot of great content. A recent video, for example, was about the 1955 Topps All American Football Set. I recommend you check out their inventory and YouTube page. I've included links to both in the description below. This one's sent by Grant, who wrote one card that is featured on high rollers often is 1980 Topps Bird Magic Irving. The card is the rookie card of both Bird and Magic. A PSA 6 of that card sells for around $1,000. With the set design being smaller mini cards, Bird and Magic appear in the set three times, each in total. Thus, they have three rookie cards in the set, although the Bird Magic Irving variation is the most sought after by far. I recently purchased a lot of cards from a local seller at a storage unit. Inside my lot uh, were about 50 cards from the 1980 Topps basketball set, including this uh, Magic Boon long card. Mine is very OC, but I looked up the graded prices to learn that although this is Magic's rookie, it's simply not worth very much. I found this PSA 6 copy at $29 uh, or best offer. I offered $25 and the seller accepted a Magic Johnson rookie card PSA 6 for about the price of the grading fee. Yeah, totally agree. Great example of an alternative rookie. You know, if you're a big Magic Johnson collector, fan, or whatever, and you, you can't afford the rookie, well, here you can pick up his, his alternative. I mean, this is a rookie year card as well. PSA 6, just uh, 25 bucks, uh, just a, a nice nice alternative rookie. I think we did the Larry Bird version of this a few weeks ago on the regular rollers. And I actually plan to do a video fairly soon about, you know, nice alternative rookies uh, for a, a fraction of the price, but great example of that here. Next one was sent in by Jason, who wrote, Before the Super Bowl, I picked up an Andy Reid rookie auto. Given his second Super Bowl win, he's now a lock for the Hall of Fame, and uh, given the age of Mahomes, Reed could become considered one of the greatest coaches of all time. I think I probably paid the going price for this card, but I believe the card like this has a lot of upside. NFL coaches are probably the least considered rookies, given it's official. Uh, it's often difficult to determine what their rookie is. Uh, very cool. I've never seen this card before. I would have had no idea that this was Andy Reid's first card or rookie card or first auto or, or whatever. At first glance, it appears to be an Andy Hall card, who I guess was a quarterback for the Eagles at one point, but Andy Reid was coaching him at the time, and yeah, got the Andy Reid auto uh, there. Very, very cool. 86 bucks for the card. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I, I like your thinking on it. This was sent in by Neil in Canada, who wrote, My mom was a seamstress in a smaller city in Canada throughout her career from the 1980s until just recently. She worked for a gentleman named George Mikan for many of those years. 
One day in the mid-90s, he asked me if I knew who George Mike and the basketball player was, and of course, I had a vague idea that he was a Hall of Fame player from many decades ago. He told me that he shared the same name as him and uh, that the real George Mikan was indeed an uncle of his. As a collector, a Mikan rookie card is well beyond my pay grade, but I wanted to at least find an affordable autograph of his. To my surprise, there are a few signed Mikan items you can find on eBay that I think are of incredible value. I ended up buying this autograph on a postcard that is in a PSA Authentic holder, and I could not be happier. For $125, it's a, a fraction of the price of a Mikan auto card, and it is now the real showpiece of my collection. And we'll finish on a nice vintage pickup. This was sent in by Mikey, who I think I've done three deals with through the mail now. And the uh, the last deal we did, the, the money I paid him for his cards, he used to buy this Ted Williams card. 1940 play ball. Ted Williams is graded PSA 1. Uh, it's a second year card of Teddy Ball game. And uh, yeah, it's a 1, but basically perfectly centered there, which is uh, which is nice. Went for $520, which is a, a little, a little. it's a good price. A little under market value. Market value, I would say, is more like 600 that's about the average of the last few PSA one sales, so uh, a nice price here. And uh, Mikey wrote, "This is a this is a PSA one, but it's one of my all time dream cards. And since I'm only 21 years old, I'm going to try to keep it for my entire life. Uh, very cool." But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone for all the great submissions. Keep them coming, and I will see you all again real soon. Thanks everyone. <laughs>